it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, thank you also for a lovely dinner yesterday evening. Actually, uh, my director, Ms. Aviana Pulgarelli, has left CDFOP in October 2010, so a few months ago, and uh, she would have made the gender balance on this table even more pronounced than it is right now. Sorry for that. What is CDFOP? CDFOP is, uh, together with Eurofound, one of the oldest European agencies. It was founded in 1975. It was in Berlin until 1995. And in 1995, it moved to Thessaloniki, as the Germans preferred to have the European Central Bank, for whatever reason, I don't know. <coughs> CDFOP is uh, the European agency to develop vocational education and training policies within the European Union. Together, today, we have uh, around 130 to 140 employees covering 23 nationalities. 65%, two thirds of them, are women. I'm happy to tell you that also in the management, the top management, the heads of areas and the directorate, the gender balance is in order. We are an equal opportunity employer. Our budget is around 17.2 million, and uh, much, uh, more than 10 million of this is Title I. <laughs> As those of you who are familiar with EU speak <laughs> will know, this covers personal expenses. And uh, this is important because uh, it signifies to you that CDFOP is not just contracting out work and uh, administrating contracts, but that we do in-house research. So uh, more than 60% uh, more than of our staff is actually in operational areas, and a lot of them are high qual highly qualified experts in vocational education and training, contributing with their own research to provide the policy makers in Europe with the evidence they need to make informed decisions on vocational education and training policies. We, have, uh, we are one of these agencies which have a huge governing board. Our governing board covers 90 persons. It's uh, three persons per member state plus the European Commission. These uh, three representatives per member states come one from the government, one from the employer side, and one from the employees. We have found uh, a practical way to work with this. We have uh, organized a bureau, which only covers 12 people, who meet six times a year, and the governing board in full only meets once a year. We do cherish, actually, this uh, huge governing board, because it gives us a possibility to work very closely with the member states and have contact persons in the member states to disseminate our work on the one side, but then also to collect information on national developments and the situation in the member states through them. This already leads a little bit to what we are doing. We are, we are gathering information, we are doing research, we analyze information, we provide evidence and new insights, we inform and advise. One of the major successes in, uh, of CDFOP has been in the last uh, eight years, since 2002, in the Copenhagen process, the development of European tools, and I will come back to this. And then we provide a platform. We have many conferences and workshops where we bring stakeholders together, policy makers, to discuss results, to learn from each other, and to make better decisions in vocational education and training policies. So it's not only the European Commission which is certainly one of our main stakeholders, or the European Parliament, or the European Council, 
but also the member states' governments, which we believe are our key stakeholders. And in vocational education, the European social partners play a particular role. Then there are, of course, many, many other partners. There's Eurostat, there's the EU agencies, there's OECD, there's ILO, there's UNESCO, and many others. In the past three years, 2009 to 2011, our four main priorities in our medium-term priorities, this is the long-term program of the, of the agency, was defined in a functional way. So it reflects actually this work, this, what we did, informing European vet policies, interpreting trends and challenges for skills, competences and learning, assessing what benefits as a future-oriented subject, and raising the profile of VET by informing on VET. So to confuse you a little bit, <laughs> and I promise I will not go into detail, but uh, to explain a little bit, uh, Europe, uh, CDFOP's work actually at the moment is very much at the center of European policy. They mentioned Europe uh, 2020 strategy and uh, at least three of the seven flagship initiatives within this, uh, within this uh, strategy are closely connected to vocational education and training. Other main policy documents which define our work and where we contributed heavily actually in the formulation of these policies, it's education and training 2020 clearly, then new skills for new jobs, I will come back to that too, or use on the move. When you look at this uh, graph, uh, what I want you to, to realize is on the right side, Far out, you have demographic change, you have social change, and on the left side, far out, you have economic growth and structural changes. And you might very well put there also gender-related issues and phenomena. Because these are the main, uh, the main trends, the main, uh, the main um, external influences which do impact on labor market needs, on the needs for new skills, and indirectly and directly actually on education and training and especially vocational education and training. I do believe uh, that uh, the gender question has been one of the uh, one if not uh, the, main, uh, the main societal change we had in the last more than 100 years actually by now which is which has been and still is transforming our societies, transforming the way we live. And uh, to give you an example, uh, uh, late, the, the increasing age uh, where um, women have their first child, uh, a different family structure, smaller families, and then of course, the increasing participation of women in the labor market and their contribution to this labor market do have changed all, and I mean really all, different aspects of our daily life. Thus it's normal that this also has a big influence on the delivery, the needs for, and actually also the content of vocational education and training. What you see in this graph is how we on the one hand try to capture these changing needs, the impact of these trends. So we do have, for example, a skills forecast, which is one of the major activities we do in this and this is one of the priorities, of the future priorities, 2012 to 2014, the external influences on VET and the response of VET. Because on the one hand, on the one hand 
it's important, and, but it's not uh, particularly new. And then it's new in the sense that it's uh, a more conscious effort at the moment to capture these changing skill needs. But that's not enough. It's only valuable if you find the transmission mechanism by which vocational education and training for one enterprises for another aspect can react to these changing needs in a way which is empowering the individual to plan his life, to plan his career, to respond to this need and thus become a member, get an entry into the labor market, into society and lead a full life which is actually at the moment not something self-evident. If you look at unemployment rates of young people in Spain of 40%. The one priority, as I tried to explain with this, is to capture these individ- this, this trends and these changes which impact on vocational education and training and find the transmission mechanism how to react. The second main priority uh, by theme, which we are developing now, which will be decided uh, finally in June 2011, concerns the systems view. It has to do with the vocational education system as such. And there, a good example of uh, what we do there is the European instruments. Some of you may have heard of the European Qualification Framework, may have heard of the credit system of Europass, which is uh, one of these instruments. So what's missing is the third part, and the third part is, of course, the individual. And uh, the individual who must be guided, whose competences must be validated, irregardless how they have been acquired, which is also one of the new developments in this Copenhagen process, from 2002 to 2010, which is a learning outcome orientation. We are less concerned, uh, or we should be less concerned, how we acquired our skills, our knowledge, our competences, but if we have them, 